Hello everyone, another story for you. This one is called Worried Arthur and the Noisy Night and it's written by Joan Stimson and illustrated by Ian Lewis. Worried Arthur and the Noisy Night. Arthur was a penguin and a worrier. With Dad's help, he almost always managed to solve his problems, but that still didn't stop him worrying. At the moment, Arthur had something really special to worry about. Ben had asked him to sleep in his new tent, and Arthur had never stayed away before. He'd certainly never been camping. The night before the visit, Arthur tried out his new sleeping bag. Arthur wriggled happily. I won't have to worry about keeping warm, he beamed. But then he started calling down to Dad. First, it was Arthur's packing. What have I forgotten something important, he asked. Dad smiled at Arthur's bulging rucksack. Good heavens, he cried. When I was a lad, we went camping with nothing but a torch and a snack. Arthur wriggled deeper into his sleeping bag. But next it was the size of Ben's tent and Ben's beak. I know I'm not meant to mention it, whispered Arthur, but Ben's beak is the biggest in the class. What if he biffs me every time he turns over? Don't give Ben's beak a second thought, said Dad firmly. There will be plenty of room for both of you. Why, in my camping days, he chuckled, we once had six penguins to a tent and some of them had pretty big beaks, I can tell you. Arthur chuckled too, but then he began to look anxious again. Dad, he whispered even more quietly, what if something scary appears in the night? Now look here, Arthur said Dad, nothing scary will appear. How many times have I told you that the strangest sights and sounds always have a perfectly logical explanation? Arthur listened intently and at last he settled down to sleep. The next day, Arthur flew in from school. He couldn't wait for Dad to take him to Ben's house. But when Ben's mum came out to meet them, Arthur started shuffling. Whatever is it? asked Dad. Dad, hissed Arthur urgently, you won't come to collect me in your Saturday hat. But before Dad could reply, Ben was tugging at Arthur's flipper. Come and see the tent, he cried. And Arthur was waving goodbye. It was the most hectic evening of Arthur's life, and there was no time at all for worry worrying. First, Arthur's things had to be arranged in the tent. Then Ben's parents lit a fire. We're going to fry supper by starlight, they announced. And then suddenly out rushed Ben's big sister Belinda. Let me help, she squealed. Arthur had never tossed fish before, but he soon got the hang of it. Well caught, Arthur, cried Ben's mum. That's the highest tonight. After supper, there were noisy games and a sing-song. I know what to do next, said Belinda in a spooky voice. Let's tell scary stories. But Ben's mum was firm. Bed, she said. There's been quite enough excitement for one night. Arthur and Ben crept into the tent. Ben's family went indoors and just for a moment all was quiet. Isn't this brilliant, whispered Ben in the darkness. But then he got hiccups. Every time Ben hiccuped, hick, it made Arthur jump and feel just a little nervous. Hick. Try holding your breath, he suggested helpfully. At last, the spaces between Ben's hiccups became longer. But then Arthur thought he could hear other, more worrying noises. Ooh, ooh. What's that, Ben? he asked anxiously. Ooh, ooh. Now Ben could hear the noises too. At a stroke, his hiccups stopped, but his beak began to chatter. With trembling flippers, Arthur and Ben opened the tent flap. And there, in the moonlight, was something big and white and scary. Ben was in a panic. It's the abominable snowman, he stuttered. Arthur was frightened too. I wish Dad was here, he whispered. But then he remembered what Dad had told him the night before and he delved for his torch. Don't worry, Ben, said Arthur. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation. Slowly, Arthur lowered the beam of his torch. 
Suddenly, he gave a great whoop of relief. Look, Ben, he cried, the abominable snowman has got penguin feet and a dinosaur nightdress. Woo, woo, giggled Belinda as she ran back doors under her duvet. After their discovery, Arthur and Ben talked far into the night. Late next morning, Belinda brought them breakfast, or was it lunch, in their sleeping bags. When Dad came to collect him, Arthur hardly noticed his Saturday hat. He was too busy telling Dad about all his adventures. At home, Arthur spent a long time rearranging his things in his room. You didn't mind coming home, Arthur, did you? asked Dad at bedtime. Oh no, Dad, cried Arthur. It's great to be back, but whatever is it? asked Dad anxiously. It's so quiet here, whispered Arthur, and I don't know if I'll be able to get to 